Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Sellis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wednesday, the 6th of October, 2021, of the 27th week in Ordinary Time, is the optional memorial of Blessed Marie Rose de Rocher. Laudate, our daily prayer. Father in heaven, you have given me a mind to know you, a will to serve you, and a heart to love you. Give me today the grace and strength to embrace your holy will and fill my heart with your love, that all my intentions and actions may be pleasing to you. Help me to be kind and forgiving towards my neighbor as you have been towards me. Amen. Magnificat Daily Scripture, but first, regarding Blessed Marie de Rocher. The youngest of ten children, Eulalie de Rocher, was born in St. Antoine, Quebec, Canada in 1811. Working as a housekeeper to help her brother, a priest, her heart was moved by the plight of poor girls. With two companions, Eulalie founded the Sisters of the holy name of Jesus and Mary to educate the girls. Crushing debts, defamations by an apostate nun, and interior darkness were met with enduring patience. In her final illness, Mother Marie Rose entrusted her fledgling congregation to Mary. Give all your children whom you cherish the knowledge of what true love is, she begged. She died in 1849, leaving her sisters the motto, Jesus and Mary, my strength and my glory. You are concerned over a plan, and should I not be concerned over Nineveh, the great city? A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah, chapter 4, verse 1. Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry that God did not take out the evil he threatened against Nineveh. He prayed, quote, I beseech you, Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? This is why I fled at first to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and merciful God slow to anger, rich in clemency, low to punish. And now, Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord asked, Have you reason to be angry? Jonah left the city for a place to the east of it, where he built himself a hut and waited under it in the shade to see what would happen to the city. And when the Lord God provided a gourd plant that grew up over Jonah's head, giving shade that relieved him of any discomfort, Jonah was very happy over the plant. But the next morning at dawn, God sent a worm that cracked the plant so that it withered. And when the sun arose, God sent a burning east wind, and the sun beat upon Jonah's head till he became faint. Then Jonah asked for death, saying, I would be better off dead than alive. But God said to Jonah, Have you reason to be angry over the plant? I have reason to be angry, Jonah answered, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned over the plant which cost you no labor and which you did not raise. It came up, and in one night it perished. And should I not be concerned over Nineveh, the great city in which there are more than a hundred and twenty thousand persons who cannot distinguish their right hand from their left, not to mention the many cattle? The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 86 Lord, you are merciful and gracious. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for to you I call all the day. 
gladden the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the sound of my pleading. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are merciful and gracious. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You have received a spirit of adoption as sons through which we cry, Abba, Father. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Lord, teach us to pray. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 11 verse 1. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us. And do not subject us to the final test. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magnificat Meditation of the Day is entitled, Children of the Father. To the Reverend Mother Marie Rose, Superior of the Congregation of the Holy Names of Jesus and Mary, may Jesus, our Divine Spouse, be with you in this spirit and by His grace now and forever. I must admit that it was with feelings of deepest emotion and not without tears that I read your good letter and realized that it had been written by a new religious of the holy names of Jesus and Mary. My very dear sisters, I do not know how better to begin my epistle than by congratulating you upon your happiness in belonging to Jesus Christ under the invocation of the names of Jesus and Mary so sweet and so worthy of your love. How happy you are to have placed your confidence in these holy names. Oh, be true daughters of Jesus and Mary in a spirit of simplicity, obedience, humility, and zeal to make them known and esteemed for the love of Jesus crucified. Then I assure you that through those glorious names you will receive blessings far exceeding your expectations. We have been most interested in learning of your foundation and of your progress, and since we have heard that you live under the same holy rule as ourselves, we have not ceased praying our Divine Lord to fill you with His Spirit and to give you a love of the religious virtues that we are so happy to practice. That is all that we have done for you thus far. Today you have manifested the desire of sharing in all our spiritual benefits. Oh, it is with all our heart that we grant your desire. Yes, my very dear sisters, we wish that you and all those who will depend upon your community may be united with us in the love of our Lord, and that you may participate with us in all that we can do and suffer for the glory of our Divine Spouse and the honor of His Holy Mother. We promise to regard you always as our sisters, to name you thus before God and to embrace you in the arms of our charity in the heart of Jesus 
as we have been accustomed to do for all our dear daughters. Furthermore, we desire that it may please God to give you a share in all the graces that are continually showered upon our religious family. Pay us due return, love us in Jesus, and give us a share in all your spiritual benefits that, by the union of divine charity, our souls may be united even though distance separates us bodily. Remember that every time you write to us, you give us real pleasure. All our dear sisters with whom I have shared your letter unite with me in embracing you affectionately in the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary. This letter was sent to Blessed Marie Rose in 1847 by Mother Mary of St. Augustine, the superior of the congregation in Marseille, France. Laudate Reflections and Actionable Challenges from Our Scriptural Readings Introductory Prayer Lord Jesus, you are the master of the universe, and yet you wish to listen to me and guide me. You know all things past, present, and future, and yet you respect my freedom to choose you. Holy Trinity, you are completely happy and fulfilled on your own, and yet you have generously brought us into existence. You are our fulfillment. Thank you for the gift of yourself. I offer the littleness of myself in return, knowing you are pleased with what I have to give. Amen. Our petition for the next three challenges. Lord, teach me through the Our Father to pray more deeply. Our first challenge. Traditional prayers teach us the correct attitudes to have towards God. What better prayer could we devise than a prayer using the very words Jesus taught us here? Yet the Our Father is a traditional prayer, a prayer with set words prone to be recited merely by rote. But in fact, traditional prayers are an invitation to meditate set up in a way that appeals to the beginners. In the Our Father, as in all traditional prayers, we repeat phrases that express the essence of a correct relationship with God. Whether we already hold these attitudes in our heart or not, the beauty of traditional prayers is not what we say, but how we say it. If we pray these words trying to make them our own, conforming our heart to the attitudes they express, then little by little we will form a Christian heart, a heart that loves the way it should. Challenge number two. Traditional prayers can change my heart and draw it to God. When I first turned to the Lord, I had a lot to work on. Most people do. I didn't love the way I should have. I was flawed in many other ways. One of the things that helped me was the Our Father, as well as other traditional prayers. When we first come to the Lord, we don't know how Christians should think, what attitudes a Christian should hold. When we pray the Our Father from the heart, it helps our heart to change, to become more Christ-like. It takes only a moment to pray an Our Father, but from time to time we should meditate on the words. Say each phrase and repeat it, not moving on to the next phrase until we feel that we have really gotten it to the bottom of what it is saying. Our third challenge. Traditional prayers fight off the attitudes of the world. Our conversion to Christ is a change of attitudes from those of the world to those of a Christian. Every day, 
The world proposes its attitudes as something good that should be lived, but often when the world proposes as good is actually harmful to us. How do we resist? By constantly repeating to myself and meditating on Christian attitudes. This is what can happen in using traditional prayers. It is a way of helping our heart understand and embrace the Christianity we profess. The Christian who disdains traditional prayers is rejecting a powerful tool of conversion. Conversation with Christ Dear Jesus, too often I rattle off my prayers without thinking about the attitudes they contain. I want to get the full benefit of all the prayers I say every day. I want to pray these prayers more often, especially the Our Father, since it is the prayer that you yourself taught me. Our Resolution Today I will pray my traditional prayers with special attention and with the conviction that they will instruct me and change me in a way that leads me closer to God. Meditation Do you pray with joy and confidence? The Jews were noted for their devotion to prayer. Formal prayer was prescribed for three set times a day, and the rabbis had a prayer for every occasion. It was also a custom for rabbis to teach their disciples a simple prayer they might use on a regular basis. Jesus' disciples asked him for such a prayer. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he gave them the disciples' prayer, what we call the Our Father or Lord's Prayer. God treats us as his own sons and daughters. What does Jesus' prayer tell us about God and about ourselves? First, it tells us that God is both Father in being the creator and author of all that he has made, the first origin of everything and transcendent authority, and he is eternally Father by his relationship to his only Son who, reciprocally, is Son only in relation to to his father. Matthew 11:27. All fatherhood and motherhood is derived from him. Ephesians 3:14. In Jesus Christ we are reborn and become the adopted children of God. John 1:12. We can approach God confidently as a father who loves us. Jesus teaches us to address God as our Father, and to confidently ask Him for the things we need to live as His sons and daughters. We can approach God, our Father, with confidence and boldness because Jesus Christ has opened the way to heaven for us through His death and resurrection. When we ask God for help, He fortunately does not give us what we deserve. Instead, He responds with grace and mercy. He is kind and forgiving towards us, and He expects us to treat our neighbor the same. We can pray with expectant faith and trust in the Father's goodness. We can pray with expectant faith because our Heavenly Father truly loves each one of us, and He treats us as His beloved children. He delights to give us what is good. His love and grace transforms us and makes us like Himself. Through His grace and power, we can love and serve one another as Jesus taught, with grace, mercy, and loving kindness. Do you treat others as they deserve, or do you treat them as the Lord Jesus would, with grace and mercy? Jesus' prayer includes an injunction or a charge that we must ask God to forgive us in proportion as we forgive those who have wronged us. Matthew 6.14 God's grace frees us from every form of anger, resentment, envy, and hatred. Are you ready to forgive others as the Lord Jesus forgives you? Father in heaven, you have given me a mind to know you 
a will to serve you, and a heart to love you. Give me today the grace and strength to embrace your holy will and fill my heart with your love that all my intentions and actions may be pleasing to you. Help me to be kind and forgiving towards my neighbor as you have been towards me. Amen. Further Reflection entitled Teach Us to Pray Luke 11, 1 Quote, Father Unquote Luke 11, 2 In a conversation with God, Jonah prayed in anger, And now, Lord, please take my life from me. But the Lord asked, Have you reason to be angry? Jonah 4, 2 Part of Jonah's prayer actually involved a direct back-and-forth conversation with God. Jonah 4.4 4. Yet, an in-person conversation with God has less life-changing impact for Jonah than did spending three days in the belly of a fish. Jonah 2.1 This demonstrates that something was lacking in Jonah's prayer life. Cain and Solomon likewise had direct conversations with Almighty God, Genesis 4, 9, and Kings 11, 11. These encounters with God likewise failed to change their hearts. My new grandson, Frederick, is two months old. He has just learned how to focus his eyes on his parents. He spends time in their arms and gazes into their eyes, he is learning his parents' voices and facial expressions. Frederick's daily life is absorbed in his relationship with his mom and dad. Although Frederick cannot talk yet, his relationship with his parents is a beautiful example of the kind of prayer Jesus is teaching to his disciples. As children of God, we ask God, as Jesus taught us, saying, Father, an intimate word which could be translated as Abba or Daddy. Romans 8.15 and Galatians 4.6 In prayer, we learn who our Father is, trust Him as would an infant, and fall deeply in love with Him. Dare to pray, Father. Our prayer, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Luke 11, 2 God's promise to us, you are great and you do wondrous deeds. Psalm 86, 10 Thomas A. Campus quote from the Imitation of Christ Woe to them that inquire after many curious things of men, and are little curious of the way to serve me. Amen. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May His peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>